the second part of the video. In the first part we were discussing this data set, HO2, and now I'm going to play with another data set, which is this Australian beer data set. So first of all, let's plot the data. And here we go, you can see that you have a strong seasonal pattern, but you also see a very non-trivial trend. So this is not growing linearly or quadratically, so you have a kind of increase and then a mild decrease. And the other thing that you can see is that you have different variants uh, at, at some points of the data set. So here the variance is lower than in the middle. So let's take a look at Box Cox Lambda. Sphere. And you can see this is point two. Maybe we can try to do some transformation. So let's use the, the actually the exact Box Cox transformation of our sphere and then use this lambda. Box Cox that lambda our sphere. Here we go. Let's take a look at the data. And now it looks more with less variance, so the amplitude is more or less the same, but we still have this problem with the trend. Okay? So first of all, I'm going to try to feed some very basic decomposition method. So let's feed STL, STL, Y. Let me take a look at the data. So as you can see that the period here is semester in quarters. So and that means that I could use different window times, but if you don't want to mess around with the parameters, just oh sorry, just choose window equals p periodic, and that means that it's going to take a lag equals m equals four in this case to process the data. Okay, let's plot the fit. STL, and here we go. So this is the original series. This is the the trend. As I was anticipating, you can see this increase and then this kind of mild decrease. Then the seasonal part, which is not very well captured using STL. You can see that you have these huge spikes from, from one period to the next one. And then you still see some negative correlations in the data. So probably that means that STL is not capturing this negative trend because you can see a large bar going above and then a large bar going below and so on and so forth. So you still have this trend these trains, sorry, trains of correlations, but they are alternating between positive and negative. Okay, so now let's try to use uh, one of the other methods that we've discussed. In this case, exponential smoothening. And again, sorry, ETS, Y. Let's plot this part. Fit ETS. Here we go. And one comment here. If you want to improve the method, the, the fitting, actually, you can see that the slope. It looks like it's changing a lot, but you can see that the range is not that large. So take a look at this. So this is 0.05 and this is minus 0.025. That means that in a time span of 10 years, you're only changing 0 0.2 to so two point, so, uh, 0.2, sorry. So you would go like from 10.5 to 10.7. That means that the slope is not very relevant. And actually you could try to improve the fitting. You take a look at the help. You can tune the parameters of ETS but instead of taking, the, like in this case, the, the automatic fitting, which is uh, a multiplicative model for the noise, an additive for the trend, an additive for the system, maybe you can tune up some of the parameters of the trend in order to have something which is flat, absolutely flat. And that means that you're going to include, include more information into the level and the system part. Okay, but that's not the purpose of this video. So let's move on. Let's check the residuals, GGTS display that ETS residuals. Okay, here we go. Oh, this looks very nice. So probably there is some auto regressive and a moving average part because you have a one lag here, but we have removed completely the seasonal part. So that means that going back to this plot, that we have captured pretty well the trend, uh, sorry, the, the, the seasonality. Okay, so this decomposition is actually pretty good. Okay, let's compare with Arima. Again, I'm, I'm not going to tune Arima as in other videos as we were trying to first remove the, the the degree, the difference, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to use how to arima. Oh, sorry. How to arima. Here we go, and why. So let's take a summary of this. Okay, here we go. So this is an arima 211 with seasonality 011. Let's take a look at the coefficients. Two times this parameter is still much lower than this one, so this coefficient is going to be statistically significant. This is not significant, because if you multiply this by 1.92, it's going to be comparable to this one. And that means that probably a better model would be something like 
one 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 or one one or something like that. I'm not going to 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 waste some time with that, but you just still see that you can apply some of the concepts that we have seen before in the in the lectures. Okay, let's do some plotting of the fit. Okay, you can see that the fit is not bad. Actually, all the roots are well inside the parameter, including the seasonal ones. Now let's plot the residuals. And here we go. Of course, Arima is trying to reduce correlation, and this is why the, the residuals are less correlated than in the case of ETS. But the good thing with ETS, going back to this plot, is that this is not perfect, so we are still missing some our correlations with lang one, but we're capturing better the trend. So that doesn't mean that the only thing that matters is this one. As I was saying in the theory video, remember this kind of cheat sheet. If, if correlation is what matters in the data, and that means that we are not capturing with ETS the decomposition, then uh, RMI is the best choice. But in this case, the trend is not trivial, the seasonal part is not trivial. So I would say that ETS is going to be the winner, but let's move on a little bit. Okay, let's see how it's forecasting. Again, I'm going to use these functions that I've defined before. So remember that in order to use cross-validation with time series, we need to create these prediction functions. I'm going to start with two lags, okay? And here we go. So the function should work. So let's see, the mean error is the lowest is Arima, and the second one is exponential smoothing, and the maximum error the same. So this is the winner. But let's increase a little bit the time span and run this again. And in this case, you can see that now the error is lower actually for, for ETS rather than for RMI. And why is that? And let me stress this part. So this is kind of an art. I, I'm not saying that this is trivial, but the idea here is, oh, sorry, let me maybe this one is better. So the idea is that RMI is not very good capturing trends because in order to explain this trend, you have to say, you have to say that this is produced by the correlations between this and the noise. So sometimes you have some fluctuations back and because of that you're going down and then because of that again you're just saying that you have this decreasing trend. But probably this is not what is happening in reality. So in reality you have a kind of different explanation in, in this case related to the, the number of sales of beer in, the, in Australia, maybe related to the population, maybe related to some regulation and you cannot capture that with using correlation. So I would say that in this case the winner is exponential smoothening. But remember that the idea of this is not a competition. So why Arima was the best when the lag was equals two? Because uh, actually Arima is trying to predict the future using the, the last observations. And that's why if we are moving just a little bit into the future, probably these correlations matter the most. And, and this means that in the end, we have a kind of dual explanation. So in the short term, Arima is capturing well this seasonality and it's capturing well these correlations. But in the long term, what matters is the trend and the overall seasonal part. And I like in this case ETS because you can see that ETS is, all, is capturing the seasonal part, but it's also modulating the seasonal part. So as you can see that you have this modulation. So the fluctuations between summer and winter are different in different years. And, and I kind of like this sort of explanation. Again, ETS, going back to uh, my discussion before, is giving us a lot of information about the slope. So in this case, the slope is not relevant. And, and you see that the slope is changing, but what, what ETS is telling us is that the slope is an artifact. So basically here, what matters is this interaction between the noise and the correlation and the seasonal part. And the slope is a kind of artifact of this situation. Okay, you can stop the video now, but I'm going to show you another example. If you want to stick with me a little, a little bit more, I'm going to use this, uh, this data set that I have in my GitHub account, SpanishEconomy.csv. If you take a look at this economy, you see that we have this data frame and you have the year, GDP, the growth, which is the derivative actually of the GDP. But here I want to focus in population. So let's do some plotting. Have this a snippet, economy. And then let's plot the year versus the population. And here we go. So you can see that this is a very hard one. So the population in Spain grew almost steadily from the 1960 to 1980 at a linear growth rate. So from 30 million to, let's say, 30, 38 million. And it was a kind of plateau. And then I would say by the end of the, the, of the century, we have this huge increase 
probably because of the, the economy expansion. And then probably th this is a contraction due to the, the finance financial crisis of 2008. And then we are stabilized more or less again. Okay, so let's create some time series for using this, par this parameter. TS, economy, population. Okay, if we are upload this, you basically you have the same thing. Okay, if you want to be more precise, you, when you create the time series, you would say something like a start equals, uh, let me go back to this plot, 1960. Okay, but it doesn't matter. So let's move on a little bit. Okay, in this case, I'm not going to check box cogs and I'm not going to use decomposition because this data set is not periodic. So I have to tune a little bit the parameter for STL. So let's move on a little bit and just compare ETS and ARIMA. So in this case, ETS, again, let's take a look at this and let's do some auto plotting. Sorry. Feed that ETS and here we go. So you can see that we don't have much residuals and, and there is a good reason for that. And because the time series is pretty smooth. So you can see that basically we, we are saying that you can explain everything with this uh, with this level which is growing with time and some changes in the slope and this is lovely because you can see that I was, my, my explanation was kind of good so basically the growth was more or less steady the slope was constant from the 1960s to the 1980s then a small decline and then these I don't know the economics the economic economic Spanish expansion in the 2000s and then the economic crisis and then the population drop down now let's run out Oro Arima Why? Let me look inside. I'm curious about. Okay. So this is of course not not seasonal data, and this is two one zero. Let's take a look at the coefficients. This pretty, looks pretty significant. So all the terms are significant. So it looks like a nice model at, at this point. Let's check the residuals in both cases. GT. Oh sorry. GTTS. ETS residuals okay so we're not capturing this part this is not a seasonal component remember that the data set is not seasonal and this is this is not a failure of ETS basically this is a way in which you can do some diagnostics that means that something happened by the end of the 1970s so there's there was something unexpected at, at that time and that's why you see it you're watching this correlation and again there is something that is going on in the 2000s and 2008 so you can detect actually the the spanish economic expansion and also you can detect the economic crisis so this drop down is really interesting let's take a look at arima and here we go it's capturing pretty well the residuals so it's, it's putting everything almost into these dash bars but you can see here that arima is not capturing pretty well so you take a look at the residuals the residuals are not they, they do not behave like random noise so this is a kind of a smooth function so this a smooth decline is not captured well by the arima remember that arima is trying to to introduce some noise and it's trying to correlate that noise with past predictions and it means that this time this type of data series is not appropriate when you have these very smooth functions there okay so let's do a more quantitative analysis okay i'm going to copy these functions again Okay, let's remove the STL part. Okay, so here we go. Let's start with lag equals two. Let's remove this part again. And here we go. So here the, the mean average is almost the same. So in this case, the exponential smoothing is slightly better also for the maximum one. And let's move into the future and see what happens. And, and you can see that it's much better, even much better. So, and, and this goes into this rationale that i've been trying to explain you so let me go back to the time series so whenever you have a very smooth function like this it's really hard for arima to to capture that that trend that that smoothness because harima in, in the end is is kind of taking correlations from the data and try to predict the future using the last pass values but you can see that we have a kind of microeconomic uh, cycles here inside and actually if we go back to this this plot you can see that this is pretty much what is happening there. 
so we have a very long span so you cannot explain this point using the last point so you have to understand the whole series and then the idea of this decomposition using exponential smoothening is that you're nailing the explanation so you have a clear-cut explanation here actually you can going back to this figure if you live in the 80s the 80s were really hard so we have uh, an economic crisis after an economic crisis and probably this is I know, produced some people to to emigrate from spain to other european countries so this is a lovely explanation of, of this data set so in summary so we have this cheat sheet remember and and the best method for comparing models is not just simply taking this cross validation stuff or taking all the correlations into play or, or, or looking at seasonality and that pattern so you have to use a combination of intuition a quantitative analysis but also try to understand in which cases Harima is going to perform better than ETS okay so let's trust our eyes so let's plot actually auto plot let's say feed, sorry y 20 okay this is the prediction of Arima this is the prediction of STL sorry uh, something wrong here sorry for ETS okay let's put both together create a range and here we go so here we have a nice comparison so you could say again you could say that this is best because it's more accurate but accuracy here is misleading so the problem with this data set is we have these huge ups and downs and whenever you have an economic crisis you have this drop in the in the slope and this is not captured by Arima. Arima basically is saying that everything seems to be growing up and up and up. And actually, this is a consequence of this one here. Remember that this is the degree of differencing. So basically, this means that Arima thinks that this is a linear trend. And that's why you have a still a linear trend and you have some correlations around that trend. But ETS is capturing these cycles, that these ups and downs. And then noise is multiplicative because fluctuations in the noise has a huge impact. So a drop in this impulse is going to affect into the future and then you have this additive trend and then you have this uh, this seasonal part which is removed completely from the data set so again in this case being more conservative is better because it's capturing these ups and downs and this unpredictability coming from the data series